Nime Name, beloved in Christ, ten days after Easter Sunday, the joy of the resurrection continues to renew our whole world and fill our hearts with deep gratitude towards God for the glorious victory over sin and death. I am equally filled with this Paschal joy as I humbly clothe myself in an attitude of gratitude within bounds of sobriety and propriety towards my brother Archbishop John Bonaventure Kofi and our two venerable auxiliary bishops elect Monsignor John Cobna Louis and Monsignor Anthony Na Asari for the dutiful but joyful honor they have extended to me to pronounce a brief homely on this auspicious day. Thanks ever so much, my father and brother, Archbishop John Bonaventure Kofi. Thanks a lot, my brother, Monsignor John Cobna Louis, my friend and my former president of the National Union of Diocesan Priest Associations. He continues to give me a copy of every book he writes or publishes before it comes out. My brother, God bless you. Thank to you too, Monsignor Na Asari Anthony. You were in Pedu Seminary, Cape Coast, the prefect of Vatican Hall. And because of that, it is known, it is still practiced to today. The prefect of Vatican Hall received the title Cardinal. So though I was rector, I called the Cardinal Anthony Na Asari of Vatican Hall. How awesome that now I am humbly invited to preach to my Cardinal Tony. Fraternally, my brother auxiliary bishops elect also kept reminding me not to forget, to remember, to advise them as a former auxiliary bishop of Kumasi between 2004 and 2008. My brothers, I will try. God be my helper. Cantabo misericordias to us in eternum domine. I will sing forever of your mercies, O Lord. Psalm 89, verse 2. Your Excellencies, beloved in Christ, by the choice of this response to the Psalm 89, I believe our venerable auxiliary bishops desire to blend their voices with that of King David in recognition of God's mercies, goodness, faithfulness, or kindness in choosing them unworthy as they are for such episcopal ministry just as he chose David, David for a kingly ministry and established his dynasty forever. Verse 5 of Psalm 89. My venerable brother, auxiliary bishops, I believe you are inviting us all to entreat the Lord to keep you strong and efficient in his mercies. 
Additionally, our two brothers have selected three other readings for our reflection. The first reading, Acts 20, 28 to 30, forms part of a larger pericope known as the farewell speech of St. Paul to the elders of the community of Ephesus. Acts 20, 17 to 38. The verse 25 makes the farewell speech more pathetic when Paul said but now I know that none of you to whom I preached the kingdom during my missionary travels will ever see my face again the farewell event becomes even more dramatic in verse 36 and verse 37 where Paul said when he had finished speaking he knelt down and prayed with them all they were all weeping loudly as they threw their arms around Paul and kissed him for they were deeply distressed that he had said that they would never see his face again beloved in Christ our venerable brothers are not bidding us farewell like St. Paul no you will see them we will see them all over the eyes of Accra and beyond they are making their own Paul's spiritual and pastoral testament or his last wishes in the manner in which in Africa our elders culturally especially the dying will convene the family members to offer them their last wishes Paul placed before the elders of Ephesus their responsibility and the duties of their mission he said keep watch over the flock of which the Holy Spirit has appointed you overseers verse 28 brethren ours is to pray for our two brothers to be able to fulfill their mission faithfully in the archdiocese of Accra in Ghana and beyond without fear or favor shiva or quiver interestingly the second reading first peter 5 1 to 4 also constitutes a farewell speech or the last words of first peter spanning from 5 1 to 14 the elders of the community that peter was addressing are to exercise their leadership with the same selflessness that characterized Christ's own life and death. Like the presbyters of old, we are all encouraged to stand firm in the face of the numerous sufferings and challenges inherent in our pastoral responsibility with a free and willing disposition not lording it over the people not seeking shameful profit but being examples to the flock my dear friends our venerable auxiliary bishops will again stand in need of our prayers in that regard they stand in need of our optimal and collective support in the spirit of synodality, mission, communion, and participation. Our brothers 
want us to pray for them to be able to assist the diocesan bishop, my brother John, and the whole I diocese in leading us along the path we have traced for ourselves. Arise, cut it faithful, rejoice and renew. Renew our baptismal commitment to fill our spiritual emptiness, to mend our brokenness, to banish our hopelessness, our helplessness, our moral recklessness, and restlessness with the help of God. Beloved in Christ, the gospel too, like the first two readings, comes from the concluding chapter of St. John. Jesus, the risen Lord, we can say, gives his farewell speech to Peter and the rest. He calls Simon by his family name, Simon, son of John. Do you love me more than this? Peter's threefold answer is strategically solicited to remind him and us all of our threefold denial of our master. In the gospel passage and our reflection, Jesus is depicted as a good shepherd who wants Peter to share in his shepherding function. Mutatis mutandis, Jesus invites our two venerable auxiliary bishops and all of us by extrapolation to demonstrate an impeccable, irreproachable, immaculate, stainless, sinless, and exemplary shepherding role in his footsteps. Beloved in Christ, your unflinching support for our brothers is of the essence in the accomplishment of their Episcopal ministry. To be able to abide in Christ, the good shepherd, for the glory of God, manete in Christo at gloriam Dei, to abide in Christ for God's glory, to abide in Christ, Louis, for God's glory, Anthony, you need our prayers. But we need to invite Christ to stay with us. Mane nobiscum domine should be your prayer and your prayer and our prayer for you. Specifically, beloved in Christ, the need to pray for them, for their role, is exemplified, codified in church documents. The pastoral office of the bishops in the church, Christus Dominus, paragraphs 25 and 26, and the code of the canon law, canons 403 to 411, the 1983 edition. Joyfully, already in the brochure, the planning committee has done a human job. They have given a whole outline on the functions of the auxiliary bishops and titular bishops and coadjutor bishops. They have done the major part of what I'm going to say here. So, grosso modo, what are we saying for the auxiliary bishops? The highest and objective good of the lost flock or the diocese of Accra can demand the appointment of auxiliary bishops to assist the diocesan bishop in his pastoral administration due either to the great size of the diocese, the number of inhabitants, baptized, catechumens, some special pastoral situation, or for some other reasons, 
like health or personal challenges. The auxiliary bishops so appointed do not have the right of succession. Only coadjutor bishops have. My brothers, you know as well as I do that the two of you can only take possession of your offices when you show your apostolic letters of appointment to the Dyson Bishop in the presence of the Chancellor of the Diocese of the Curia who makes a record of them and I'm told you have done that furthermore unless your apostolic letters provide otherwise and without prejudice to the provisions of Canon 406, paragraph 1, your diocesan bishop is to appoint one of his other bishops as vicar general, or at least the other as episcopal vicar, independent solely on his authority. The rationale behind this provision is that the vicar general and Episcopal vicar must give a report to the diocesan bishop about more important pastoral matters they have dealt with or are yet to attend to. I must quickly add that you are never allowed by church law canon 480 to act against the will and the mind of your diocesan bishop. In this case, our brother John Bonaventure Kofi, you are legally forbidden to be against his will, his wish, his vision, his mission, and the transmission of his mission for Accra Diocese. You cannot. You cannot do that. May I therefore be permitted to propose a few practical considerations for your meditation and action, just as you asked me to. You said, Your Grace, don't forget to remember that you are auxiliary bishop. Tell us how to be auxiliary bishop. So, eight practical pieces of advice for you. One, it is jovially said that the coadjutor bishop always goes to the assistant bishop and inquires about himself. Whereas, whereas the auxiliary bishop always goes to the assistant bishop and reports on what he was assigned to do and asks for more job to do. That is your job. Ask for more job to do. Don't ask about himself. When are you going to retire or resign? Hey, hey, hey. That is not your job. Number two, proverbially, it is not common for a walking stick to be taller than its owner or user. Neither is it conceivable for the imposing beard to pretend to be older than the eyebrow. My brothers, kindly keep in mind that your Archbishop John must increase and you must decrease. John chapter 3 verse 30. In other words, you must with him uphold the truth which is Jesus Christ at all times in this archdiocese. The red color in your Episcopal dress signifies your readiness to defend the truth which is only one, Jesus Christ at all times to the point of shedding blood you have been told, you know therefore at all times with your bishop you must stand by the truth and never let there be found any contradiction among the three. There's only one bishop and two auxiliary bishops. 
There's only one bishop. John, in Judea, if you are the Baptist, defended the truth to the end. John, if you are the apostle on the island of Patmos, defended the truth to the end. He is your patron. My brother, Louis, we have no other thing but to be like John. Cardinal Tony, you are eminence. You are Anthony. You know who you are. Anthony, the Franciscan friar, the theologian, the pastor, defended the truth in Lisbon, Portugal, in Paris, France, and in Padua, Italy, till he died. You must defend the truth, Anthony. That is your name and your calling. Three, you are surely conversant with the saying what the elders the old people see sitting down what they see sitting down we the young those standing cannot see the diocesan bishop's vision and strategic planning initiatives are the ones guiding the archdiocese notwithstanding your lofty ideas you have them but there's only one vision guiding Accra Archdiocese remember that in fact you are not bishops of Accra you are titular bishops Louis are you not titular bishop of Faith Sartano Tony are you not titular bishop of Castellano in Numidia in Nigeria go to your diocese what are you doing here So technically, geographically, canonically, you have been seconded to Accra. This is not your diocese. It is clear in your minds. I'm only telling the people. You know it. Therefore, when you have done your duty, you should say with the Latin scholars, Servi unitiles sumus. We are useless servants. Luke 17, verse 10. Those who like Greek, Gar Akreyoi Esmen. We are useless servants. We are non profitable servants. We are not worthy. We have just done our duty, but a soft word will be we are mere auxiliary bishops. The Oga Kwata Kwata is John Kofi. He is the Oga here. You may love to hear. That when I was auxiliary bishop in Kumasi 2004-2008, my non-existent diocese was located in Kela in Mauritania. So I share a boundary with you, Mauritania, Algeria. <laughs> we will go and visit our dioceses. Anytime I travel for Rekowa or Seka meeting, my priest will say, Oh, he has gone to his diocese. Yes, I've gone to my diocese. So, once again, it's just a repetition. Accra is not your diocese. A word to the wise is enough. Four. Look at this observation very well. It has been observed that the elephants in La Côte d'Ivoire are very special of all their kind in West Africa. They are very large ears. But a small mouth. Do I need to expatiate on that for you? Do I need to ventilate that observation or elucidate or elaborate or exponentiate? Your ears could be as large as the ears of the ivory elephant, but your mouth must be small. You understand that. Five. Anatomist have also observed that all the major vital organs in the human body are hidden. They don't make any noise. Yet, they are efficient. The heart, the lungs, the liver, the kidneys, and the pancreas do not make any noise. Yet, they work with that pump and pageantry 
I humbly invite you, therefore, to seek to avoid whatever is so popular, whatever is so nice, avoid whatever is so cheap, and whatever is so beautiful. Avoid all these four. Six, we are still in the Easter season. We recall that upon receiving the intelligence report for Mary Magdalene, Peter and John both ran to the tomb. However, John Louis and Tony Asarina waited for Peter Kofi to enter the tomb. You get it? Both ran. John and Peter. In this case, John Louis and Tony Na Asari ran faster to the tomb. But they waited for Peter Bonaventure, John Kofi, to enter the tomb. He decides, not you. You surely are the two ears, the two eyes, the two hands, the two legs of the diocesan bishop. But there is only one head. I've never seen two heads. Never seen two heads on one human body. I've never seen that. Seven. I have personally observed that it is quite difficult to drink a very consistent okra soup with one finger. I suggest to you that you will need the other fingers of the clergy and the religious of the faithful of Accra Archdiocese to be able to drink this Accra Archdiocese Okro soup. Eight and the last. Exodus 18, 18. Moses was advised by his father-in-law Jethro you cannot sit in judgment from morning to evening. You are tired, and the people are tired. And your wife, my daughter, Sipora, doesn't have a husband to talk to. Moses, you cannot do this work alone. The Episcopal ministry cannot be done alone. You need the expertise and the experience of all around here, even of non catholics even of non-Christians. May God, who has brought you this far, lead you thus far to him may goodness and kindness follow you all the days of your lives so that in the Lord's own house shall you all dwell forever and ever Amen